is Teresa and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to go see exactly how limited my arm movement is. Because, because I just got blood drawn on this arm and my flu shot on this arm. So this is going to be a fun time. But today I'm actually going to be doing a review, a TV show review, which I haven't done since I think Wings Club Season 2 came out. Um, and it's going to be my in-depth thoughts on Daisy Jones and the Six, the TV show. I've sat with my thoughts for a minute. I wrote them all down um, once the TV show ended, and I had sat with them and edited a couple things, and now I think it's my thoughts have been wrapped up as best as I could to what I think about it, what I think went wrong, not so much wrong, what I think cha the changes on the show that worked, what didn't work, what I think could have been to make it so it flowed a little more. This is not a review of the book. If you would like that, I did a review of the book back when the book first came out. So I will leave that link down below for you guys if you guys want to see my initial thoughts when I first read the book. And I think I recently reread it and it's in my Feb... February? Yes, my February wrap-up so you guys can go ahead and also enjoy that if you guys choose to. If you like this kind of content for me, you all know the drill. Hit like, subscribe, and comment. And let me know your thoughts on the TV show. And let's get into it. I didn't realize I wrote that much until I saw it on my iPad and I was like, oh. Let me show you. Still going. And we reached the bottom. Let me start off all of y'all with what Daisy Jones and the Six is actually about. If you guys haven't read the book or haven't watched the show, Daisy Jones and the Six, it's a TV show, well, based off a book, now a TV show, that is heavily inspired by both the Civil Wars and Fleetwood Mac. And it talks about the rise, the fall, or, yeah, the rise, the duration, and the fall of the band Daisy Jones and the Six. In, it's told primarily in interview format, so in the book it is very broken up and we don't exactly know what is the truth and what isn't the truth. But in the TV show, they kind of gave us that interview format while also like low-key giving us the whole of the big picture of the of the story. But go, starting off with my expectations of the book, I was really excited for this, for this TV show. I knew they were going to make changes. It's just how it is when you transfer things from book to screen. Not everything can be transferred over properly. Things will have to change. Things will have to adjust for a different format. So I wasn't too worried about that. I was interested and intrigued by the potential of the songs though because... At first I was upset when they first released um, Honeycomb. I was like, they changed the lyrics and then my friend said something to the effect of, shout out to Sam, saying that they had, they probably will have to change it because like what Taylor Jenkins wrote, while beautiful, is not the, um, is not meant for an actual song. So considering they actually had like Maren Morris, I believe, sing on there, I think they had Marcus Mumford on there, something like that. They had those guys on the on the um, song writing them it made sense for um, it to be changed so I was uh, after that initial shock I was like okay this makes sense now and I was expecting those larger changes I just wasn't sure how I was gonna like them moving forward with the show but that being said I did have some pretty high expectations as it is Amazon Prime and Amazon Prime we give Amazon a lot of our money so I don't think that they would cheap out on the locationing the budgeting the costuming the cast or anything like that and I was actually kind of excited to see who they end up casting and how they dress the characters. Moving on to my thoughts about the cast, I didn't really have like set pictures of how I imagined like any of the cast members to look or like the characters to look in the book aside from what they told me about Daisy and Billy. We knew that Daisy had these long, like these curly, curly hair. Um, she didn't wear pants a lot. She didn't wear a bra a lot. Um, in terms of Billy, we knew that he is handsome but he does look significantly older than what he actually does uh, what his actual age is due to the fact that he did wean off of drugs and that process took it out of him we also know that he likes a lot of denim my thoughts on riley keogh was casting i wasn't sure on riley keogh as daisy jones simply because i had seen her in other things mad max the lodge riverdale that one was a weird one i started i think it was devil all the time that she was also in i could be wrong but I wasn't too sure on Riley Keough. Like, I knew she was going to bring the Daisy oomph. But I feel like the the I had seen, like, Riley Keough to me looks too bright-eyed and doe-eyed to, like, for me to, when I first saw the casting, to really bring the oomph that Daisy did. So I was kind of hesitant on her. But 
I was, you know, like I said, exci still excited unless we have Elvis's granddaughter singing for a show. So I was excited to see what kind of vocals she had, considering I'm assuming, I think she said in interviews that everyone in her family were like musical artists except for her. But, you know, I, as I said, Amazon wasn't going to cheap out. So I had a feeling they were probably going to put her through lessons or find like a really good vocal dub. One of the two things, I'm pretty, they ended up actually training Riley for this TV show. So they trained everyone for the TV show. So, like I said, they didn't cheap out, so we can't, I can't complain. Thoughts on the music as I have now re listened to it repeatedly throughout the past two, like, th month and a half-ish, I want to say. Like I said in the beginning, I was really interested to see how they were going to write Taylor Jenkins' lyrics into an actual, um, song multiple of them and I was a, m one of the many few fans that was a little bit upset when they released Honeycomb and they didn't include those or Regret Me first I think Regret Me was the first one or was it Honeycomb first one of the two I was one of those few fans that was accept, uh, upset that we didn't get to see the Taylor Jenkins lyrics come out and after a very short conversation with my friend again thank you Sam who pointed out that like while well, what Taylor Jenkins read did write was beautiful I it wasn't lyrics it was poetry and like poetry doesn't always translate well to lyrics like if y'all have ever walked down a band hallway during high school like the arts hallway there's always that one kid who brings their guitar along to everything and who guitar who like guitars to every little fallout boy song or random song that he f that they found during that weekend during lunchtime and there's that one time they tried to sing like a poem of theirs into a song and it was realistically like one chord the entire time and like no actual progressions or change in pace and it didn't translate well so don't expect that to translate well but i was expecting at least to include home oh, arm Ugh. But I will say though, I was hoping that they would somehow include some of Taylor Jenkins' lyrics in the song. Like, I really, really, really wanted the line, I hope I ruin rock and roll for you, in the in Regret Me Somewhere, or even the single line from Tiny Dancer. But I am going to say that what they did with the songs, I think that it, it portrayed the feeling that Billy was trying to do when he was writing them, and the eventual feelings that he and Daisy had over the course of them songwriting. So it made sense to me after a while, but like, God, I really wanted the line. I hope, I, I hope you regret, I hope I make you regret rock and roll forever. I hope I ruin rock and roll. But overall, I feel like the sound of the band is exactly how I would have imagined Daisy Jones and the Six. Like the vibe of it seems like it fits the tone of the teeth of like the band itself. So I, d I didn't have an issue with this like sound that the band decided to have. Moving on to the changes that I think dented the show for me. I really dislike what they did with Nikki this time around. In this one, they made Nikki just seem like a really spineless man who like maybe cared for Daisy, maybe didn't, but still very spineless of a man. And in the books, he was more smarmy. It was very obvious that he was like using Daisy for his, um, for the fact that she had all this money, the fact that he was fucking broke, but like, in the TV show, I was like, I just wanted him to be smarmier. I wanted him to make me feel the ick more. I wanted more from Nikki than what we got. And instead, it just humanized him. And I'm sitting here like, no, you're supposed to be this, this, this disgusting motherfucker. But you're not. The other thing that I think dented it really realistically for me was the Camilla and Eddie of it all. Like, yeah, was it nice to like kind of give Eddie like some more oomph by making him pine over Camilla? Sure. But I think at the end of it, it just didn't make much sense going forward. I know that the plan of it was to like create some tension and maybe give Camilla a secret of her own and give Eddie something to eventually hold over Billy in the end of it. But like when it got down to the nitty gritty, there was nothing for them to go off of. Like everyone was like, I ship them so much. And like, no, you don't. Eddie will ruin Camilla. Like... Point blank, Camilla's, uh, they've mentioned it so many times in the books and the TV show that Camilla is someone who was born complete. She had a chip on her sh on her shoulder. She knew exactly what she wanted and how she was going to get it. She wasn't going to beat around the bush. She wasn't going to deal with bullshit that she was going to deal her way. Like she wanted what she wanted and she was going to do what it took to stay where she wanted to be at. 
in this book eddie just like i'll talk about it more because my next point but eddie just didn't seem that way he seemed to always be wanting the next best thing you see that when he wanted to um when like at the very end for him where he was like jumping from band to band and he still performed so this many times and he just like, didn't seem like the happiest person in the world so to me it was just like it didn't make much sense to me i wanted it to go away i wanted it to not be a situ i wanted it to not happen um but it did and i'm just like listen to all y'all camilla eddie stands they would have ruined each other because Eddie would have wanted the continual next best thing that his career would have given him. And Camilla wouldn't have wanted that. She want, she would have wanted just a family. And I don't think Eddie would have given that to her realistic. My next point is the fact that Eddie got got humanized in this TV show. In, Ed, in the books, I really disliked Eddie. Like, he had some main points and sometimes I felt bad for the dude. But in this one, like, the actor portrayed him beautifully. He is on The Night Before Christmas and My Family and I love that movie. But in this one, he just seemed more pitiful it, than he was in the book. He see, like, including the pining after Camilla, um, wanting to become the head of the band when Billy decides to leave, um... He just seemed to me that he was never going to be happy with the life that he had. He wanted more from it and continuously still wanted more. The fact that he, as, as Warren even puts out, that he has this once in a lifetime chance and he, instead of like enjoying that and soaking it in, he's continually searching for this form of validation that isn't going to happen, that he probably will never want. I, like To me, this version of Eddie felt very entitled to everything Billy had. From wanting to sleep with Camilla, only to hold it over um, Billy in the future because he got upset, to literally trying to emulate Billy, being like, I have a better stage presence than him, and then him trying to audition to be the next lead singer for the band and that not working out well. Or, and even to the point of him wearing full denim in the photo shoot for the like Aurora cover, I sat there and was like, like I pointed that out to my friend Sam and she's like, oh my god. But to me, this... Eddie just seemed so much more pathetic and he didn't have the same voice that made t book Eddie there and I was just like I wanted this so badly and like I'm sorry but if you've been pining over this woman since you were in Sunday school you clearly cared about this woman and you loved her if you're up like why would you hold the fact that you've slept with her over her husband who's clearly falling apart right now and then to boot not even be man enough to go to her funeral and be like i don't know like no if billy throws a punch at you you take the punch later like you go to her funeral you say goodbye to her you 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 look at look, look at her look at her daughter in the face and tell her how much you cared for her for her mom tell her how much she's grown into this beautiful woman that her mom would have been proud of and if billy decides to throw a punch during the funeral then you take it you don't sit there and go i would have been there i just i just didn't know like you go but like again this eddie to me just seems like he wanted more and he was just very insecure and just like in the book he, billy and eddie had more of headbutting going on in the sense that they're both pretty equally talented the only thing is is that billy had this charisma that eddie was lacking but they were both equally talented they both knew what they were talking about musically wise eddie just lacked the same kind of charisma in this one it seemed very much so that he just didn't have like not only the charisma but he wanted everything billy had he wanted the family life but he wasn't gonna go after and get it he wanted the talent but he wasn't gonna do anything about it he wanted x y and z and then continuously like blamed like, yeah, Billy is an asshole. But he continued to just blamed him for everything when, uh, as per what Warren said, they had everything. They had $1,000 champagnes. They had women they could have wanted to sleep with who wanted them back. They had all this money, all this fame. And Eddie was like, I just need more. And I think that's probably where I think he would have ruined Camilla is him consistently wanting more and not being happy with what he had. Moving on to the things that I really did enjoy about the show, I love that we gave Camilla a bigger storyline. I love that we did give her more of a, po she, was a she was a stronger presence in the TV show than I felt like she was in the book sometimes. 
I think it just rounded out the story a little bit more and then also gave Camilla more of a voice where I think in the books it was very obvious that Julia had a bit of a bias and wanted to show this beautifully perfect version of her mother who had just passed away but in the TV show I feel like we got to see more of Camilla's flaws, we got to see more of her insecurities and we get to see more of that bullheadedness that was very like implied in the TV sh in the books in the TV show. I also really enjoyed the relationship between the girls. Like rereading the book this time around and then watching the TV show, I really liked that we kept that solidarity be between the girls. We kept Camilla as this girl's girl who just like pr wanted the best for both Karen and Daisy no matter where they were at their odds. We see Karen love Daisy and Camilla so much to the point where she was like, Camilla's the reason I joined the band, she's the reason I stayed. Like I don't like, this girl meant everything to me. We get to see Daisy um, really support Karen throughout everything and still like at the core of what, um, like at the core despite this, their problems, she seemed to still really respect Camilla as well, which is a nice aspect to have. And I like that they still didn't pit the girls against each other. It was very much a them against the fact that Billy is doing this thing that's breaking both of their hearts. I also really enjoyed Simone's storyline. I think that in the book we didn't get to see a ton of Simone. She was just very much a supporter of Daisy. But in the, in the TV show we get to see her like kind of find her own voice and figure out where she wants to be and find out what she wants to do with her life and what that looks like. And it was just such a fun thing to watch. I found I found that Simone's storyline was actually one of my favorites of the TV show. She just brought this life to this character and brought so much dimension to an initially like almost two-dimensional character and I like the way that she kind of interacted with the world and the what she f learned was her point of success and I love that she was still this rock for Daisy and that hadn't changed. Um, I will say that I wanted more of Simone's spunk because like the Italy Greece situation that happened where Daisy was where Daisy did the thing because Nikki influenced her, I feel like Simone Book Simone would have slapped the living heck out of her. She would have been like, "We're going home," or dragged her by like bunched her hair up and was like slap like probably slapped her then dra grabbed her hair and then dragged her home and was like, "You're going home. This isn't working out. We're going home." But I loved Simone and I loved the soul that she had, and I just she was my favorite part. Easily one of my favorite parts of the TV show. Easily. The last one isn't so much like a, I love that it wasn't here, but it worked. I like that they didn't include Pete. And like, yes, I think Pete in the books played a huge role. I think that he had this huge role in the books where, in the book where he was like this grounding moment for all the characters and was a very like, just very much someone who enjoyed the the limelight but also had something to fall back on and knew that it wasn't going to be a forever thing for him but i think in the tv show he would have played such a little role that there would have been no point in including her or including pete in the book like i or in the tv show or including pete in the tv show i think that getting rid of him was a smart choice and that he like i didn't lose out a lot of, in the show without a pete there I think the kind of like inclusion of like some of Warren's like groundedness rounded out the band. Plus I also like the fact that Camilla is implied to have been the sixth member of the band of Daisy Jones and the Six. So it was a very cute moment for me to have Karen like look at everyone and be like, what about the Six? And then Camilla in the back be like, thank you. Cause it's just a, she is such an integral per part of the band. Like you guys have no idea that I think it just, it worked out for the better that way. Moving on, moving on to the kind of the second to last segment before I get into like my overall rating and thoughts of the show is the things that I wish was included in the book or in the TV show that I love from the book. Number one being Lola LaCava. Like I just love the ridiculousness of it. I like the ridiculousness of that in the book to be like Daisy was such a standout even from a young age that we had to have her under a pseudonym so people don't hound her. And I think that would have added to more of like Daisy's like rock star persona because I felt like the, the TV show version of Daisy was like again a little bit more like less wild child and a little bit more like big eyed and like doe eyed and like ready to see the world kind of situation which I liked for the TV show but in the books I wanted the Lola Cava. The next part that I really wish was in the TV show was Camilla's small speeches like the one of what, what she wanted being like um, to Billy the one of her talking to Karen 
about like how the fact that she loves the family and having a family makes her so happy but she understands that it's not Karen uh, Karen's life is not meant for Karen and then Daisy her speech to Daisy was such a powerful moment for me and I think that it showed a lot of Camilla's characterization and I understand why they took out some of those situations um, primarily with Daisy's situation because I think it gave more agency to Daisy to leave but I liked kind of like paralleling Billy's um, situation in the bar at that moment paralleling Billy's situation in the bar at that moment where um, where it's almost like a stranger's kindness can take you far because I think that Camilla and Daisy at this point hadn't really had like a strong relationship like they weren't hating each other by any means but it wasn't like strong for them to be like to have this conversation so candidly so I think it was like almost like a stranger's love and like respect for one another that I really wanted to see and again it just rounded up Camilla's personality so much and gave us more info on like who she is as a person and how she expresses her love and care for people and I think that's the thing that I really would have enjoyed to see in that in, in that moment. I wish we got Billy's speech about Bill, about Camilla and Daisy. We got it partially when Daisy and Billy were like mirroring each other. They're like, yeah, he liked everything I liked. I, I saw the world the same way. But I wanted the portion where Billy like explains why he would choose Camilla over and over again. Where we get to see kind of... Um, why Billy adores Daisy and why the two of them work together as a pair but at the end of the day Daisy isn't what Billy needed and I liked that like almost like devotion that he had to Camilla within that speech saying that like Daisy's fire she's passion she's all of these things where she wanted the where he was like Daisy's like fire this passion but Camilla is this calm persona that I need in my life that I love having in my life and I'll never give up Camilla for anything and I think that also leads into the other point where we didn't see a lot of Billy's devotion to Camilla. Like in the books, in the book, we see Daisy, we see Billy cheat on her realistically, like once that he's admitted to. But throughout the end of it, like everything he wrote about was about Camilla. Everything he dreamed about involved Camilla and the girls. Everything he wished for was a life with Camilla and the girls. He wanted this stability and this, um, life with this woman he had such huge devotion for her and he wouldn't have traded that for he wouldn't have removed that for anything and the only reason he stayed being a rock star was because camilla wanted him to have that life and not because he was particularly like in love with the idea after going to rehab and everything and i wish we got to see more of that devotion like i think that devotion would have changed everyone's perspectives on the tv show um because it leaned a little more heavily toward the billy and daisy side of things Whereas with the, the book, it was more like of an even split almost with Billy heavily devoted to Camilla. Like he worshipped the ground this woman walked on. And I wanted to see more of that because that was such a highlight. And like the only reason why Billy was so tolerable in the book was because he had this redeeming factor of loving this woman so much. Of loving his of loving his daughters so much and his family and the life they had built together that he wouldn't have changed that for anything and the last thing that i wish had been included in the tv show was the bar scene we did get a bar scene in the tv show but um not in the same way that it was in the book in the book it was this powerful moment where billy is um threatened with relapsing and he he's struggling with this demon and he wants to just let it let it loose to say screw it to everything that he's ever worked for and just let the demon back out but again similarly to i think what happened with daisy was this kind of stranger's kindness situation where someone looked at him struggling and saw this 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 power struggle between him and this very obvious demon and brought him back down and just again showed that like stranger's kindness and stranger's like compassion which i think was a really strong point in the book because it it showed um because it, again it paralleled both daisy and billy at the same time once again but then it also again had that moment of like people fail and that's okay but we have you can't rely on yourself the entire time you sometimes have to rely on the kindness of others and sometimes it's a complete stranger in the bar who looks at you and tells you that you have that this little picture of these three girls and your wife are everything you need to look for everything you need to look for so i think that's where i'm just like i wish that was in the book because it's such a powerful moment in the book 
and in the TV show it kind of got watered down to someone offering him a drink and Billy just saying like struggling with it until he downs it and it's downhill from there and I would have loved that touching moment because I think it would have like to have been toward the end of the TV show because I think it would have forced Billy to like look inward again and then cause like the self-reflection that he maybe hadn't been like loving his wife as much or appreciating his wife as much and maybe he needed more help than just the rehab and just the total amount of control he needed over every situation. I had one more one more section before my overall thoughts. The other minor things I enjoyed, one of them being Warren Rojas. Rojas? I enjoyed him in the book. He was such a fun moment in the book and he's even funnier here. I think they I think they definitely blended some of um Pete's grounding moments with Warren's, especially in the um Eddie and Warren scene. But I think that he was such a fun character and I loved his relationship with everyone. It, he was just enjoyable to watch. The other thing I liked was the Camille, the Julia reveal scene. Spoiler, sorry. I just enjoyed the fact that it wasn't Julia talking to Daisy when it was revealed. It was Julia talking to Billy and her being like, I remember more than you think. And implying that maybe like Julia appreciates the life she has now with her father simply because she had seen the life that was there beforehand and saw the amount of work and love and rebuilding it took to get there and maybe saw like the amount of love and rebuilding it took to get t back to her family's like her parents relationship and I just really enjoyed that scene I think it was a cute scene and it brought a little bit more depth to have it be in front of Billy versus being with Daisy and having Julia go wait I don't remember that and Daisy and Daisy being like, oh well, you should, because I mean, you were like seven, so you probably wouldn't have remembered it either way. The second to last thing, I, the second to last other thing that I enjoy were the outfits. Like, I am a huge fan of like the '60s, '70s, like wild child outfits. That like I would love to dress like that, but I have no idea where to buy anything. But I really enjoyed this look, like these outfits, and I just want to redo my entire wardrobe. I also enjoyed the slight change to how Cam Camilla and Billy met. I think it was fun and I think it had showed a lot more of, again, Camilla's like chip on her shoulders for her to know who Billy Dunn was, to know how to get under his skin enough to be like, oh yeah, um, I was just asking if you were done with the hamper or whatever it was. It's just Mastermind by Taylor Swift was written for this woman and I love this woman so much. I am a Camilla Dunn stan through and through. Like, you can't make me not be a Camilla Dunn stan, so. Moving on to my overall thoughts and my rating, I give this, I would say, probably a four to five stars. Do I think this book, this TV show was enjoyable and I loved it? Of course. Do I think there are some bits that I did not like about the TV show and I would have preferred if we kept a little truer to the books with some certain scenes? Yes, but I do think the TV show and the book stand on its own and you could probably enjoy them both interchangeably or if you're, just, if you're not a reader, TV show or if you're just not a fan of maybe how they're going to change things and want to keep the image of the book in your in your life you're not going to miss out on either one but I really did enjoy them I definitely cried in some scenes I cheered in others I wanted to I love these characters the same in the TV show I love the TV show characters the same way that I loved the book characters I was rooting for all of their successes much like Camilla does with everything in life and I just wanted the best for them and I think every it was probably like one of the better TV show adaptations I had seen in a while. There's just a lot of care given to it, both from the cast and the crew and the producers and the writers and the people who wrote the music. I, there was just a lot of care and love given to this show, which I think is what makes it a standout for me. And I really did enjoy it and I highly recommend it. Do I think you should read the book first before you get onto the TV show? Yes, but again, if you're not a reader, I get it. But that is it for my thoughts on Days and Joes in the Six. I now need to go ice this arm because I am in a lot of pain. Um, but if you guys enjoy these kind of things, let me know in the comments down below. I would love to do more TV show or movie um, reviews for y'all or analyses if you guys are into that kind of stuff. But until next time, hit like, subscribe, and comment. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Ow. Bye.